I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it's time for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. I'm coming to you this week from Davenport, Iowa, and we begin just 45 minutes north of me at a campground not too different than this one at Makokata Cave State Park with the horrible news of a triple homicide that took place in the campground. Officers responded to reports of shots fired in the 6 a.m. hour on Friday. They found three people fatally shot in their tent. The Iowa Department of Public Safety identified the deceased as Sarah and Tyler Schmidt, both age 42, and their daughter Lula, age 6. Their nine-year-old son, Arlo, survived the attack and is safe. The suspected killer, 23-year-old Nebraska resident Anthony Orlando Sherwin, was found dead nearby with an apparent self-inflicted gun wound. Officials haven't yet been able to make any connection between the Schmitz and their killer, nor have they been able to find any suspected motive for the murders. The Schmitz resided in Cedar Falls, Iowa, where Sarah worked at the library. A GoFundMe campaign has been set up for Arlo's care, and the state park and campground were evacuated and are closed until further notice. It's hard to make a transition away from that, so I'm not going to try. Are you seeing fewer people in campgrounds out there? Well, KOA says you are but maybe it's not that many. The nation's largest campground franchise is reporting a 3.4% reduction in occupancy for the second quarter of 2022, which is impressive considering the dramatic increase in fuel prices in May and June. But while occupancy is slightly down, revenue is absolutely not, and neither are advanced reservations. Compared to the same period last year, registration revenue at KOAs improved by 5.9% and deposits are up 1.8% over the previous quarter, which puts advanced deposits 62.9% over the same time period in 2019, which at that point was the strongest camping year on record. It's clear that fuel prices and economy concerns aren't affecting campgrounds all that much yet. There's a lot more news ahead, but first, this episode is sponsored by our friends at RoadPass, makers of the Togo RV app. Download it for free on Apple or Android and use it for RV maintenance reminders and checklists and storing all the data about your RV. They have all kinds of RV ownership information, including a new course from Abby and myself on RV buying. If you like the app, you can get a RoadPass Pro membership, which unlocks all of the premium features of the Togo RV app. It's $49.99 a year and gives you turn-by-turn -turn RV GPS routing, lots of great discounts on things like tires and lithium batteries and more. A RoadPass membership also includes premium features at Campendium, Road Trippers, R Village, along with the overnight RVParking.com database of truly verified boondocking spots. Download the free Togo RV app, and if you decide to upgrade to a RoadPass Pro membership, you can save $10 off with the promo code RVMILES10X. California is certainly a contender for the most beautiful state in the nation to camp in, but it's getting harder and harder for campground owners to stay open due to the rising cost of fire insurance. Eight of the state's 10 largest fires on record and 12 of the top 20 have happened within the last five years, according to Cal Fire. Last week, we talked about the Washburn Fire in the Yosemite area, which is now 79% contained, but a new fire broke out on Friday in the area the Oak Fire has spurred evacuation of 3,000 people. And before I hear about how fires are natural, nearly 85% of wildland fires in the United States are caused by humans. And human-caused fires are generally more destructive because fires sparked by lightning usually had rain before or after it. In California alone, more than 2.5 million acres were burned in nearly 9,000 fires last year. The California Outdoor Hospitality Association is warning that unless state officials and the insurance industry can figure out ways to rein in the rapidly escalating insurance costs, the cost of travel and tourism within California will increase. California will lose travelers to other states and will begin to see private parks and even some hotels being forced out of business. And it's not just the cost. Several insurance carriers have exited the market altogether. The state of California has tried to address the problem by creating an association of insurance carriers who are willing to provide insurance to private parks and hotels when others won't. But park operators complain that the costs are out of reach and the coverage is grossly insufficient. 
Some park operators are facing five-fold increases in insurance costs, costs that are too high to simply pass on to their guests without pricing themselves out of the market. Camping may still be going strong, but there continue to be signs of pullbacks in the RV industry. Keystone, one of the largest manufacturers out there, is closing two plants in Goshen, Indiana, putting more than 300 employees out of work. One of the plants was built back in 2011 for Keystone's Laredo line, which many have noticed recently disappeared quietly from the Keystone website. It's the first real big layoff we've heard about in the industry this year. But remember, RV manufacturers were hiring fast and furiously over the last two years. It's probably a bit of a more return to normal operations at this point, but that doesn't help the 300 people without jobs. Still, Elkhart County, which is built on the RV industry, has some of the nation's lowest unemployment rates, with apparently 10,000 jobs available right now. I think we may see more of this going forward, but to me, while the industry faces some headwinds, I'm not seeing any signs of a major collapse anytime soon, especially if the economy holds out. Manufacturers are certainly moving forward with new models and it's time for the model year changeover. So we're beginning to hear about new products and new floor plans. Alliance RV has announced its first travel trailer, according to an article in RV Business. Alliance has become immensely popular for its fifth wheel since opening its doors in 2019. But now there's an Alliance Valor travel trailer. What's more, it's a toy hauler with a 13-foot garage and an industry-first three slides and first island kitchen in a toy hauler travel trailer. It's an adaptation of the company's top-selling fifth wheel floor plan at about 36 foot long with a whopping gross vehicle weight rating of 13,000 pounds. Alliance is also announcing an all-new floor plan in the Paradigm fifth wheel lineup, the 382RK. It's a rear kitchen, bath and a half, along with the 26RD floor plan in the Avenue series, a 29-foot sub 10,000-pound coach with a big rear entry living space and queen bed up front. ATC, manufacturer of aluminum RVs, has announced its 2023 toy hauler models, the Play 500 series and Play 700 series, available in both travel trailer and fifth wheel toy hauler configurations. The Play series replaces ATC's Game Changer series. Play is focused on adding premium touches like touchscreen control and monitoring of systems, dimmable lighting, quick connect gas hookups, and a quality stereo system. ATC's trailers are manufactured with a focus on durability, and Play adds features that fall in line with that focus in a stylish way, like a new kitchen backsplash that fully extends from the countertop to overhead cabinets. It's amazing how rare that is and a durable vinyl rug in the garage space. Like all ATCs, the Play Series offers a unique configurable track system that allows you to place dinettes, tables, and sofas wherever you want them. And of course, there's hardly any wood to be found. Finally, a family of six is lucky to survive a crash on I-95 in Johnston County, North Carolina on Friday morning when a trailer came loose from its truck, causing a crash. The five riding in the truck had relatively minor injuries, but one person was riding inside the trailer and they were hospitalized with serious injuries. Believe it or not, it is legal to ride in a fifth wheel in many states, as long as you have communication with the driver, but in no states is it legal to ride in a travel trailer. Do I even need to say how bad of an idea that is? Anyway, that's where we'll leave it this week. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want more videos like this and make sure to check us out over on the RV Miles podcast on any podcast app or on the RV Miles podcast YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.